Okay, so hello and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to be looking at this PC that I've picked up. This is a purchase I made off Facebook Marketplace. And it was just listed as computer and it was £30. Now, all that it said is possibly needs a new motherboard for spares of parts or repair. All there was was a picture of the front like this and a picture of the back. They weren't very good pictures either, but yeah. I took the chance on it. The reason being is because this case it's in here is a bit Phoenix Prodigy M, it's Micro ATX. It's a reasonably pricey case. By the time I got there, like when I looked at it, it turns out that it is a bit broken here. You can see the, the plastic's cracked and that, but we might be able to repair that. But anyway, dismissing that. The other thing I looked at, we've got a selection of additional adding cards. So, we've got this TP Link Wi Fi card. Now, that's probably going to be PCI Express and probably worth about a tenner itself, £10. There's also a graphics card fitted. Now, don't know what it is. Could be an older one, could be a newer one. It's got HDMI and a DVID, but it's also got a VGA. So it's not gonna be anything top, top tier. The motherboard itself as well. We can see it's got USB 3. So it should be relatively modern. It's got onboard HDMI. And uh, that's all I could really see from the pictures, to be honest. So I figured it's a nice little case. And uh, between the DVD drive, the Wi-Fi card, the graphics card, I'll probably get my money's back or do okay on it, you know, because obviously it's going to have power supply, memory and stuff, hopefully. So this is what I've got, and I didn't know whether it would have had a hard drive removed or anything. Now, if you look here, there's actually a warranty protection sticker on it, and that's so, like, it's a bit worn at the corners. If we look in the top here, there's also a grill that sort of undoes. You can pick this up. And you can see in it, oh, the top's just come off there, but you can see in there that there's there's some bits and pieces in there. We've got gigabyte graphics card, various things. So I did have a sneak peek in the top, but I've not actually taken this apart yet. And I've not even plugged it in. So I don't even know whether it works or not, or what the fault is. First of all, let's plug this thing in and see what it does or doesn't do. And then we'll start dissecting it and see what we actually got for our money. Okay, so here's a monitor set up. We've got the tower itself here. I'm just going to plug this thing in. Just got a HDMI for the monitor. I'm going to plug that into the graphics card. USB keyboard, USB mouse. And a power cable. And we'll see what happens. Well, there was a crack when I plugged it in. I don't know if you heard that. It was a bit of a arcing noise. That's usually a good sign, because it means that the power supply is sort of working and it's charging. So let's try and turn this on, the power button's on the side. We've got a power light. Can have the DVD drive spinning as well. The monitor's currently in standby, you can't see but there's an orange light on the side of it here. Sounds like the tower's just rebooted again. There's no number lock light or anything on the keyboard. turn the tower around oh it's just gone off I didn't know the kit no it's come back on again yeah so it's just reboot looping then let's try and eject the DVD drive see no DVD drive works so there's no display no power no beeps nothing now there might not be a speaker connected to the motherboard we don't know but let's just disconnect the power and we'll open this thing and have a look at what we got in it and see if we can solve the problem. So I'm going to start with this side here because the motherboard's on that side. So we'll have a look at what we've got in here. There's actually no seal on this side. Um, so the warranty seal is on the wrong side, interestingly. But anyway, screws out. How's uh, oh, that supposed to come off? Does it slide backwards? It does, but it's quite stiff. There we go. Okay, so it's quite dusty in here. The first thing I've seen is a Samsung SSD here. All the front panel, well, side panel connectors are all here. We've got an EVGA power supply. So it's a 430 watt EVGA, which is not bad. One of the more budget ones, but still, good brand. Samsung SSD, I wonder how big that is. 
We can't actually get in to much for this SSD mount being in the way. So I think we're going to have to unscrew this down here. Got a screwdriver. I'm assuming these are the screws that hold this mount in. I've never actually worked in this case before, so. There's also two screws in the top here. So that's dropped out, now the four screws are removed. We might be able to see what size the SSD is. Uh, I can see 750 Evo through the hole, but I can't see the capacity. So well, let's just unscrew this and have a look. So providing the SSD works, we've got our money back alone just in that. I'm also noticing I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it because it's probably a little dark with the tower stood up right, I'll have to light down. But we've got two sticks of Corsair RAM, red RAM, with heat spreaders on it. So this is a 750 EVO 250 gigabyte. That's not bad at all. Definitely worth the money for that alone. Let me uh, stand this on its back. So you're looking top down into the case now. It should be a lot lighter and easier to see. So there's the SSD that I've just removed, that's a Samsung 750 EVO 250GB, put that over this side with the front panel. There's that Wi-Fi card, it's PCI Express, as I said it would be, or I expected it would be anyway. There's the graphics card, which is, I can't actually see a model number on the back of it for what that may be. We've got two sticks of this Corsair RAM. The motherboard is Gigabyte as well, you can see down here there's a model number. The motherboard's a GAH110M S2H. Now if I remember correctly, H110 chipset motherboards are for 6th or 7th generation Intel. So this could have an i3, an i5, an i7, might even just have like a Celeron or a Pentium or something in it, but, but anyway. Um. Let's take the RAM out and have a look at what size this is. So we've got Vengeance LPX DDR4 and this is 2400 MHz 8 GB in 2x4 GB so it's a 8 GB kit so two 4 GB modules they should both be the same been covered in dust off everything. It's very dusty. There we go. That's a matched pair. So again, not bad. Eight gigabytes of RAM. Good quality RAM. Uh, I'm debating whether to take the heatsink off and have a look what the processor is, but I think we'll try and get it running rather than just stripping it all down. Um, I'm going to take this plate out here and just bring this up, see if we can get the graphics card out. Have a look at what that is, maybe it's got a, a sticker on it somewhere. Okay, very dusty graphics card. I don't know what this dust is, it's sort of like plasterboard dust, plaster dust maybe? It was from an industrial unit that I got the computer from, so but the company seems to be moving out of it, so. It says, uh, GN N710D31GL. So, I'm gonna guess that that's gonna be a, N means NVIDIA, 710 is probably the model, so I'd say it's maybe a GT710 or something. D3 probably means DDR3, and then 1GL is probably one gig of RAM. So it's probably a GeForce 710 with one gig of RAM on it, I would imagine. So that's everything stripped. All that's connected now is the front panels, the Wi-Fi card. Uh, I think I'll put one stick of memory in. And we'll try and power this on and use the onboard video to get a display output. It's built with decent quality components though. Okay, so I've put the HDMI into the motherboard. I'm just going to plug the keyboard in and the power supply. 
I'll try and power this on now using the onboard video and just one stick of memory. Oh, the board's got uh, LED lighting down there around the audio. Okay, so it's on. The monitor's still in standby, it's not coming on. CPU fan and everything's running. Oh, it's just powered off. It'll probably turn itself back on again and just boot cycle. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to strip everything from the motherboard, apart from the front panel connectors for the power and LEDs. To remove them out of the way. I'm also going to set this Wi Fi card out and I'm just going to narrow it down to the bare minimum to see if that works. So we've got a stick of memory, the fans, just the power supply, nothing else. Let's try that. I'm also noting that there is no speaker on this motherboard. It's got a header for it. Uh, I don't know if I've got one. If I've got a buzzer to plug in, that would be helpful. Yes, I have indeed. I've just had a look through my box a bit. And I've got a bag of buzzers. So I'm going to plug one of those in. I wish more motherboards would come with these actually mounted on them. So speaker goes at the top on this one like so there we go so it's just doing a long singular beep every so often so now with that info we can actually look up the manual for the motherboard and see what may be the problem that we need to look at. I'm assuming it should start beeping again in a second one. There we go. Yep. So I'm going to unplug the power and I'm going to look on the Gigabyte website for the H110M S2H and see what the fault codes and troubleshooting information says for that. So the general thought online seems to be it's memory related. So what I'm going to do is just completely remove the memory see if the beep changes with no memory at all installed nope so exactly the same it does four long beeps and on the fifth one puts out to restart so what I'm going to try now is putting this stick in the other slot. Just out of interest and see if that gives us any different answer. Nothing yet. There we go. And cut out part way through. Okay. So that's not making any difference. Take this RAM out. Put this other RAM in. I'm going to put it in that slot closest to the CPU again. Okay. So that's it. Plug in power and try that. If this beeps still. Our next step is I'm taking the CPU heatsink off, just have a look at the CPU, I'll try reseating that. And also resetting the BIOS itself. Oh, wait a minute. It's come on, the screen's just gone green. Oh. Well, what do you know? So this might well be a bad stick of memory. Usually I would have changed this stick out for the other one and just tried both to, to see. But yeah, this this might be the problem. 
So, uh, we've got the system info up, anyway, we may as well look at what's in this thing whilst we're here. So, I'll slant that down so you can hopefully see a bit better. CPU is at 3.28 gigahertz, memory is at 2.13, whatever. Uh, the system information. So the BIOS version this is running is 2016. We've got anywhere that actually gives us the processor model. Oh, here we go. So, going into MIT current status, we've got the CPU. So it's actually got an Intel Core i5 6400 CPU, 2.7 gigahertz, and it's turbo boosting up to like 3.3. So it's doing fine thermally. So that CPU is currently worth. Okay, so the i5 6400, the standard model here from CEX. They currently sell for £45. So it's about £45 CPU. So that's not bad. It's actually cheaper than I thought it might have been. But still, can't grumble for the price we paid for the whole system. Uh, I'm now going to turn this off and back on just to make sure that it starts up first time. That it wasn't just a fluke. That looks pretty promising. Yeah, we're done. So if I turn that off, I'm going to put the other stick of RAM back in that's here. So I'm just push that in. There, like so. So we've now got both sticks of RAM installed. I'll just show you that really quick. And we'll try and power up with this. Just to see whether that stick stops it from booting now. It may have just been contacts and needed reseating. Or it might be an actually bad stick of memory. But well, this will give us an idea now. I mean, it's still silent at the moment, so I think it might be... Yeah. Sounds like that's a bad stick. I'm going to take that stick back out again. There's that one. We'll turn it on again. And it started straight away. There we go. So just out of interest again, because sometimes dirty sockets, dirty contacts, etc. I'm going to move this stick into the second slot and see if the computer still works. Because it could be a dodgy memory slot or channel on the processor. So we'll put that on. Oh, it did boo, it was taking a while, I didn't think it was going to start up that time. But, there we go, it's okay. So that memory is working, the good stick is working in that slot. Turn this off. Accidentally pressed the reset button. Off. There we go. So I'm going to put this allegedly bad stick in the first slot now, and see if it still misbehaves. If it does, then we've narrowed it down. It's just a bad stick of memory. still in standby at the moment. This uh, casing's broke here as well. Yep. So this is definitely a bad stick of RAM. So if we take this out, put that to one side. I'm going to put this back over into here. And Let's just check it comes on again. We're going to reconnect all these front headers again as well. So that's the SSD, that's the DVD drive. So yeah, there we go. It's booted, the screen should come on. There we go. Right, so I'll reconnect these drives. So there's the DVD drive. There's the SSD. The front USB 3 port. And go back in. Front panel audio. So that's that done. So now I'm also going to drop in the Wi Fi card and the graphics card and we'll see if it still works.
Normally when you remove, the reason that I didn't try the, just the other sticker ram, I don't know why, but um, normally though when you remove both sticks, if there's a memory issue, um, it would give a different beep when there's one good and one bad versus no sticks at all. But in this case it didn't, it could just be this motherboard. So, let's get the graphics card in. This is quite a tight fit because the VGA is right on the end. There we go. Let's click that in, make sure that the retaining arm's on and that's secure. Drop this support back down to sandwich them in so they're not going anywhere. Uh, and plug the HDMI into the graphics card this time. And try and turn this on. It might actually load into an operating system and things now as well. So there could be somebody's data on this. They've probably not wiped it. So the screen's on. We've got Gigabyte Ultra Durable. We're loading Windows. Looks like Windows 10. So we should plug a mouse in as well. Arcadian Industries it's loading. So it must have been who owned the thing previously, the computer previously. And it's in, just like that. It's up, it's running and it's working. So yeah, um, it was just a bad stick of RAM. So that was uh, a good buy really, I guess. I'll have to get some more memory now and I'll do something with this build in the future. That'll probably be a future video. This was more just a, an overview of what comes of the mystery Facebook PC. All in all, goodbye. Worth the risk for £30. I mean, stick a memory. Probably even get one of these online, cheap enough, and make a matched set again. I'll have to look up the specs of this motherboard and see where we go from there. I might build it into a server. I might make it a gaming rig. I don't know. You'll see something on the channel, whatever comes of this in the future. But thanks for watching anyway. If you like this video, please leave a like. Any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And get subscribed for future random technology videos and computer videos like this one. Thanks for watching.